man, every time that comes on, I'm like, yes, I'm going to jam to this song the whole time. Me too. <laughs> me too. It's such a vibe. I actually love it. So let me welcome everyone in. Welcome to Mastering Impact, our officially our first episode together. I am your co-host, Catherine Tanaka, and this is the beautiful Kira Day. And today's conversation is going to be nothing short of amazing. We are pulling back the curtains on the journey of transformation. This is literally, guys, our secret playbook of continuous transformation that we use, use with our clients, the literal methodology that we use to really move our clients through the beginning to an end and the cyclical realm of transformation, whether they're looking to optimize their health and fitness or to pursue their passion, passion with unwavering determination, this is the good. So tonight we're going to share it all, but more from a high level perspective, all the principles, the seven cornerstones that we use in our practice, guiding individuals just like you for, to profound and lasting change. So let's get started, Kira. Yes, I'm so excited for this one, guys. And for those of you that are listening in the chat, if you feel comfortable, hey, Alexander, Amir, so good to have you. If you guys are new to this or you are regulars. I'd love to see your names in the chats, where you're from, let us know. If you're more in the background and you would prefer to not be in the, in the spotlight so much, not to worry, um, you're still going to get a ton from our session today. So let's actually kick in and provide some context. Nice. If you guys haven't seen the introduction between Catherine and I, I have posted the link in the comments for you to check that out later. But essentially, in a very, very high level way, why mastering impact and why us? Well, A, Catherine has had 25 years in the fitness industry. She is a veteran there. Yes. Um, such an amazing milestone. So super, super happy that we're doing this together. And for me, I've had more than a decade working with some of the world's largest global brands. And that was all in the realm of increasing their revenue or their profits. What I discovered on that journey is that it's never about profits. It's about how do you increase the potential of mm. the people, right? Mm. So that's really kind of what, well, that and I got sick, but that's a whole other day and a whole other story. But that really is what slipped me into this idea of passion, because here's the truth. And this is what we're going to really um, anchor in on in today's discussion and in all future conversations that we have planned for you guys. Yep. We are all systems within systems. And in the fitness world, in the human potential world, we know that life, our professions, our passions, our health, our relationships, they're not separate from one another. They are holistic. So when you're looking at a goal, if you have one in mind, or a target, or a dream, or something that you really want to achieve in your life, there's two points that you got to look at. Where you are right now, where you want to be, right? Now, the distance between the two points is the same, but we can have lag factors. So if there's any deficiencies in any one of our areas, it'll take us longer, could be five yeah. months longer, could be five years longer, could be five decades longer, whatever that lag is, it will hold you back from getting to that beat. So that is fundamentally why we're really, really excited about bringing you all into the conversation and moving along. Now, I know that there's other real you know health experts in the audience as well so if you want to drop your wisdom at any point in time or if any of you have questions as we move along put them in the chats we're here Absolutely. for you and i Hello. love that people are dropping in from north carolina virginia brampton canada we love that you're with us this evening and what i really want all of you who are listening to really think about when you're listening to these principles is really understanding that transformation is accessible to you and if you have a goal in mind while you're listening to this i want you to drop it in the conversation just so that we can make this experiential for you because one of the things that really is important for Kira and I is that this isn't just a fluffy conversation, right? This isn't about the niceties of our expertise of doing this collectively for over 40 years. We're not really old, I promise. But we're just, we're it's really okay old. if we are. It's okay if we are. Totally. It's okay if we are, but it just, but it is. It's over four decades of experience between the two of us. And so this is really about shifting 
your perspective. And even if it's 1%, really listening for those golden nuggets for where the gap is for you. So I really encourage you to share with us what you are up to, what those goals are as we dive into each principle. Do you want to kick us off, Kira? All right. So these principles are, um, before we get or dive right into what they are, we're going to go through them piece by piece, because I think it's really important that we package the language in an experiential way. I think that'll help us to kind of really dive into the juice of why they are important on the path to transformation. So what both Catherine and I have learned, and I'm sure anybody really that has ever gone through transformation, although we have the privilege of seeing many people go through this, so we've been able to suss out the patterns. Yeah. And on that journey, Everyone goes through a certain set of things, even if you're packaged different, if you've got weight loss goals, or if you want to start up your passion as a business, yep. no matter how it's packaged, we all get caught at certain points and we all have to move through certain things in order to get the transformation that we need to get to the goal. So I just want to keep that in mind. And Catherine, I'm going to just read right here from our little list. So the first place on the path to, I would say, transformation, or even if we wanted to say the principles, the seven principles of transformation, the first one is discomfort. And I think we all know this. <laughs> it's like that age old story of needing an immense amount of pain in order for us to actually move the dial on anything. I don't know why humans are this way, and I'm not gonna psychoanalyze our process, but we do need some level of tension yeah. in order for us to get into the groove of really understanding what do we do next to ask the deeper questions. So Catherine, why don't you share, share with us what you think, how you would unpack this part of the process? Yeah. So in my world, in the fitness and health space, this really looks like busy professionals being sick and tired of being sick and tired. And kind of like you alluded to a little earlier, it can be really a function of five months, five years, or five decades, right? There's really no set time on discomfort. You know, I had an experience today. I was at St. Michael's Hospital in Toronto, where I was in line to meet with a back surgeon in Toronto and Canada. It's like a six month wait to see or longer a year wait to get in with, with these surgeons. So in my sitting there today, it made me really think about my own health. So I have a, a congenital back condition that I may need back surgery for. And I'm just going to leave the cliffhanger there for you. But when I was in this entire, you know, getting the x-rays done today and sitting down with the surgeon, it made me really reflect on my physicality. Being a fitness professional, it's all about movement and all about keeping your vessel strong. Yeah. And it made me appreciate even more this journey, my personal journey that I've been on, on keeping my body strong. There were so many reasons why I started when I did and how I did and, and created a career over the last 20 plus years. But now it's about functionality. And what I was thinking about is really how can I get people to move out of discomfort so that it doesn't have to be so painful? Yes, it's a catalyst. Yes, illness or yes, a congenital back situation is a catalyst to change. But oftentimes you don't have to wait until it is this place of severe discomfort that you're like, well, I have to or else X, Y, Z, right? Yeah. And I think that's the struggle for us all because I remember, you know, my personal story is I was in corporate for quite a while and a, for many of those years, people wouldn't mm -hmm. know that who were working with me. But in the back of my mind, I was like, I knew this wasn't my path. Mm -hmm. I knew that I wanted to do that other thing, that thing that like didn't have a clue on what it was back then. I got some hints, all the things. But I remember always telling myself, oh, next year. Oh, that year. Let me complete this year. Let me get through this really large deal. Let me just make sure that the team's set up. Like all of these procrastinating, and they seemed so logical at the time, guys. Like I could justify myself to Sunday. I really, really could until my body said no. Until my body was like, okay, Kira, you can be that, be that person. You can keep going in that direction. Here's where I stop. Yeah. And that was the critical moment for me to really reevaluate everything. So like I said, 
um, change the body doesn't like, we know this, we know the brain doesn't like it. We will resist those things because we're in tempo. We're moving in a direction. It is easier for us to do that. Yeah. But to Catherine's point, there is a better way. Yeah. And it's not about forcing people to take the better way. I don't think that that's a thing because life has its own set of trickeries that will get you when you need to go the most. But I think that it's really important that we share what those sets of things are so that for those of you that want to make that choice for yourself, it's available. Because here's the thing about these seven principles, not all of them are intuitive. Yeah. You either you got to learn it or you don't know it. So we're really, really excited to dive deeper into those um, in future episodes. So stay tuned. Do we want to jump into the next one or do you have anything you want to wrap up with discomfort? You know, I, I have something else to add, but I feel like I'll, I'll add it in the discomfort because both you and I, you with human potential and me with the mindset work that I do around health and fitness, I think that is so pivotal in allowing for people to go out of discomfort into yeah. figuring out what is next, right? Yes. And kind of like you said, people get stuck here, but there are truths that our bodies and our brains think are fact, which often aren't, right? And that's why going into the second principle, which is discovery, yes. is so important to take a look at the not so obvious step of, right, really looking through these crucial patterns of our lives that are just conditioned, right, like Pavlov, right, conditioned in our subconscious and our conscious that we think are safe, but this is a responsibility to challenge those things, right? I also fundamentally know now, and, uh, and I think that this is something for us all to consider, pain is information. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. And so the discovery is really this alarm bell that's going off in our bodies or in our minds that's saying, hey, pay attention. I know you've been taught to not listen to me, but I'm here. <laughs> Stop doing the thing where you're ignoring me. And that alarm bell just keeps getting louder and louder and louder. And we do, unfortunately, um, <laughs> live in a, society, in a society that likes to numb all of that noise. Um, and so when we pick the numbing or when we pick the ignoring, that's when things ladder up to become, you know, a hella discomfortable so I or uncomfortable so I do believe that the discovery component is your body's natural way of saying look at me ask some questions let's do this together you know yeah. um I think you know this part I, is the most challenging for us because I don't know that the problem necessarily is that folks don't want to go deeper or don't want to ask the questions it's that we never actually know what questions to ask in the beginning. 100%. The first question is like, why me? Why this? Why now? Yep. Those are the first questions. <laughs> Can you think of other questions that spark up right away? <laughs> it's so true, right? Yeah. Um, but I think th these are so essential, right? And this is why I think, you know, you've run retreats, I've run retreats. It creates the time and space for people to allow these questions. Because like you said, there's always something else that pulls us. But this, like you said, is so fundamental. This is kind of that phase of uncovering and acknowledging what keeps us stagnant or stuck, right? Or keeps us feeling like you were saying, like there's something more or just unhappy, right? Like I know in my world, in the health and fitness, it is really looking to understand and explore those underlying motivators or those things that no longer light us up, right? That shapes our identity or shapes our um, melancholy or shapes our behaviors that ha that are habits that aren't necessarily supportive, right? Carol, I love it. Why again? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Why again? Right. And, and yes. I think I think like one of the things that is that has been really, really powerful as a reminder for me is to know that everything is patterns. Yeah. Nature is patterns. We're math. And so when we are patterning something that we don't entirely see because it's driven by something very unconscious, that's not obvious. 
Mm -hmm. then we're not looking at the right place to understand the why again. So we'll keep doing things in accordance to the reality of cause and effect. Like it will happen because we're causing it. We just don't know how. That's the invisible part. Yeah. And that part in and of itself is an entire journey and it is an entire episode. And that is why we're going to dive deep into these as individual units because they deserve to have that level of respect. I think culturally we're at a critical point now and we can't afford to keep ignoring ourselves or ignoring these things. And a ton of people are picking up on this. You know, we're seeing massive transformations in society right now. And I really, really appreciate uh, social media for this um, particular problem, even though it's got its own sets of challenges. But the one thing that I really appreciate about social media is it does put a spotlight to enable more people to hear messages that they need to hear at the time in which they need to hear it by a ton of people. So really excited to dive into the conversation of discovery with you guys in the future. This episode. I just want to pause quickly because Matthew yeah. just shared that he broke his back 11 years ago today. Uh, your 11 years ago and had a choice, a choice I made with the information I was given, a choice to fight. And he's here today because of it. But this is exactly that, right? That we always have the choice, even yeah. in times that it feels like it has been put on us. Thank you for sharing, Matthew. I love when you guys share this stuff, right? It's really, really important. Yeah, you are in the matrix, Robert. Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Unplug yourself. Just kidding. Exactly. So, ooh, but talking about unplugging, mm -hmm. the third D in the seven principles that we are uh, moving you through is detach. Mm -hmm. detach. And this is a powerful one because what many of us don't realize is that while we're in a pattern, we are uh, identifying ourselves with that pattern. Yes. And the one thing that the body doesn't like to do, no matter what, pa what part it is, is die. Every part of our experience wants to experience life. And like I said before, we're a system and our identity, our one self, isn't just one self. It's thousands of selves that have matured, developed, experienced, have been hurt throughout our single experience. And so when identities are created, no matter if we're in situations of suffering or extreme discomfort, there is a holding on that some of these parts do, where they're like, no, don't kill me, I wanna live. And so we keep sabotaging ourselves because that part's like, nope, I'm not gonna die. <laughs> I'm gonna stay here, right? So so talk a little bit, Catherine, about like how you move some of your clients through this individual component because it is such a critical component to get to the next level. By the way, guys, every single one of these are stack items. So oftentimes when we go through our own transformation journeys or we wanna go from point A to point B, sometimes this becomes conscious and we'll trick ourselves into believing that we know all the pieces. So we'll just jump into action or we'll jump into the next part, but we will forget critical components along the way that again, become legs in our system as we move forward. So that was just yeah. the last point I wanted to make. <laughs> well, exactly. it's exactly like building a house, right? You have to start from the ground up. It has to be foundational. You can't yeah. run before you walk. You can't walk before you crawl. It's all <laughs> this pattern recognition of building. And it's also cyclical, right? We've spoken about this before. Yes. Because it's like, okay. yeah, it's all cyclical. So I think from a CBT meets fitness perspective, which is the cognitive behavioral therapy meets fitness uh, certification that I have. It's really about becoming aware of our old patterns and our old habits, right? And looking to pattern interrupt that to create new ones and new narratives. So I think that the fundamental of detaching is really looking at, and even from a subconscious, subconscious level, there are patterns that we've lived into because it did keep us safe at one time. It did create this narrative of keeping us alive, like you said, the safety, right? And it could be, you know, big T trauma to little T trauma, like many speak about. Um, 
I'm not a trauma informed specialist, but in that realm of really understanding that sometimes there's things that we do because people will say, oh, I don't have the willpower. It's sometimes it's not about the willpower. Sometimes it's about these patterns that you live into that you're constantly self-sabotaging. So it's really about looking at how can you detach yourself from these patterns, from these narratives that keep you stuck? Yes. And I, I fundamentally believe that that's a really, really, really important important part of the process. It's shining light and becoming more aware of those mm -hmm. of those things that we do. The second part of detachment is literally identity killing. It's yeah. breaking down one part of perceived self to make room to create another part of perceived self. Because here's where the uh, paradox happens. If you are moving from one state to another state, um, you have to literally build into yourself this new being that you have not met yet, yeah. that you do not know, that you have no relationship with, and no functioning idea of how that operating system can take care of the uh, organization of your life. Mm -hmm. So there is this split that may occur in this process where things become very uncomfortable. And a lot of people have learned how to manage their anxieties by controlling their, their externalities. Yeah. And when you can no longer utilize or leverage that part of your experience, it's not fun. I will tell you, it feels like death. There's going to be grieving that comes up in this stage, yeah. which isn't going to look or be recognized or even called that, but that is actually what it is. Yeah. It's an emotional process. And so having a support system while you're moving through that, critical. So important. Yeah. I just want to speak to Danny's comment. So yes. he says that his challenge seems that I've lost to how to be happy. I've looked up and realized I haven't been happy in a long time. Danny, I'm sorry to hear this. And this is that discomfort, right? This is the discomfort and the discovery, the recognition that you're actually there. So I just want to acknowledge you because sometimes we just, especially if you feel like you're on that hamster wheel, that rat race, that you're yeah. constantly trying to get somewhere, slowing down and really being able to listen mm. to these callings is, I think, so, so, so important, right? And also realizing, too, that sometimes we make happy or not happy mean something negative or positive about us. Yeah. So there is this critical component of like removing that meaning application that our brains love to do. Yeah. It, everything is information. Our emotions have information stored there. So if you're not feeling optimal and you haven't for a while, then there might just be some cleanup to do internally mm -hmm. and some areas within self or experiences that have been calling you to look at in a deeper way so that you know shedding can happen everything yeah. everything is a process and to Catherine's point everything is also cyclical as well so yeah. i know danny we're talking about um having someone that you're you're going to be able to get vulnerable with and really go there with and i'm so proud that that is where you are because in all honesty i needed that like yeah. there was no way in hell i could have done the work that I've done on my own. And I applaud every single person. I feel like this is something that's missing in our society's like upbringing. <laughs> and I am so on board to like champion how we can create better support models for those times when we really need to anchor into something and figure, figure the stuff out. It's yeah. not easy. This is hard. This is Human shit's hard. <laughs> it's hard. But I think, you know, if we can remember that we get to choose, that we get to do this work, it's not easy, right? We don't have to. You don't have to do anything. But it really is an invitation, kind of like in the invitation into this conversation, that you get to live your best life, right? Because in the realm of human potential with what you do, human potential and health and fitness and well-being and mindset, it's yeah. a safe conversation, how do we get from the shitty aspect to thriving? 
You know, maybe it's like shit to survive, to survive, to thrive, to optimize, but it really is this like baby step, one step forward, 1%. And if you can just feel like, or recognize that you don't have to get anywhere fast, right? Like one of the mottos I tell my clients all the time, it is a practice. It is baby steps towards success. Mm. One step forward, simple, right? That it doesn't mean you have to run the marathon fast. It's in the journey, like you were saying. I think, I mean, you bring up such a good point. I don't want to derail this because we've got a few more to go, but I really need to just labor into this point, right? This instant gratification, sexy mm -hmm. success culture that we're all building and trying to get to real fast. This isn't how nature works. We are bastardizing the natural process. <laughs> nature is about microdosing changes along the time. Let's look at evolution micro changes, very, very, very small, minute changes over time lead to the greatest of what we can see in nature's potential. How are we different than that? We're not. So just obviously it's a practice. It's like stabilizing and learning to get safe in our bodies so that we can have the conversation of space and patience. Space and patience only feels foreign because we have this like, again, everyone's trying to manage their anxiety externally right? We're picking up the busy just yeah. so that we can manage what we don't know how to manage. Learn how to do that. Powerful stuff is going to start happening. That 100%. Is and, you know, I'll just speak to this quickly. I'm running this wellness retreat in April and the whole theme is spring cleaning. And Ooh. one of the things that, so one of the things that I've created in the journal is really understanding the seasons of life because there's seasonality to everything in our business, in our life, in our relationships, in our health, in our wellness. It's not, when we know this in business, it's not like ROI straight line up. It's very rare, right? There are these, you know, ebbs and flow of life. And if you can almost recognize that, right, Danny, like this is a season right now that maybe it's about hibernating. It's like the winter months, like we are in, even though it's felt mm -hmm. really Toronto, right? It's, it's sometimes it's about understanding that it is these seasons of life. So yeah, thank you for sharing that. I also want to bring up what Ashif was saying and Amber as well, this idea of the attachments that we have to this letting go mm -hmm. um, and this emotional um, kind of devastation we go through when we have to remove things from our environment. I think actually that, that it's healthy. We all do need to grieve. We have to have that process available because we do form attachments where, where you can be as enlightened as you wanna be. <laughs> Human beings have to manage our attachments because it's a neurological um, aspect to ourselves. That being said, you're absolutely right. Once you go through, and again, grieving doesn't have to take five years, it can take five minutes if we know how to do it right so yes. that we can get into the mental state and the physical, emotional, physiological energy of what is what is coming available to me that I can that I've just let this thing go for, right? Yeah. Letting go, bringing in, letting go, bringing in. It's the breath of life. Exactly. So I love what you guys are popping in the chats. Keep doing that. <laughs> the um, alive receiving is so important. And I think that to what we were just speaking to, oftentimes we just want to get it done. Like let's, let's wrap it up. Let's let it go and move on. Yes. Which I understand and I appreciate because I am get shit done kind of girl. Kira knows it. <laughs> yeah, it's true, it's true. Right? And, and there's also something about seasoning the steak, letting mm -hmm. things marry and not dwelling. Let me be clear. It's not about staying stuck, but yes. letting go is about shedding multiple layers. Sometimes mm -hmm. it's easy, right? Something times it's letting go of like, you know, I like cleaning up the fries off of my kid's plate, right? Like sometimes it's as simple as that, but sometimes it's right. like, no, you know, my father growing up always spoke about money in this way. And now I have this lens of feeling like everything is in scarcity. Sometimes mm -hmm. it takes a little bit longer and a little bit of deeper work to let go of some things sometimes. Yeah. And I think that this is a fantastic point to drive in. Our experiences are very nuanced. And I know that we live in a society of like five things to do this and that and the other. But it's also like trusting your inner 
yes. um, understanding of things and that wisdom that we all come with naturally and learning how to be in communication with that. Because you're right, some things you just have to get it done. You got to power through it. You know, my dad's going through a huge move right now and he's got his, emo his emotions attached to, you know, this place that he was in for 22 years. Mm -hmm. And so us on the other end of it that don't have the same attachments are like, this has to go, this has to go, this has to go. And, <laughs> and he's just like, oh, what's going on? Stop yeah. making my stuff. Yeah. And so it's been like a minute to go back into this compassionate state of like, oh, yeah, like, Again, we do have attachments and this is a process. And so we're all rapid speed, but we're also, you know, having to negotiate that speed so that the tempo is something that he feels comfortable with as well. So again, nuances and yeah. really learning how to uh, negotiate those nuances for ourselves is such an important skill set. Yeah. I love what's going on in the chat. This is why masterminds are amazing, right? <laughs> hot seat with these but these conversations guys are amazing we're going to be able to respond to them all after this beautiful live but shall we move on to the next one absolutely absolutely so we spoke about detach for a while i think that's a big hot one so again another episode going into this so this this next one is interesting so i've noticed this with people who are pivoting their careers mm. or they want to do something different because where they are quote unquote sucks Mm. And so what we can tend to do, because again, theme here, we want to manage our anxieties, is we get into action. We get yes. into like, want to get this done and over with. I'm so done with this. So we go into like, I want to design this. I want to do this. I want to do this. And they're like, I don't need to talk to anyone. I'm just going full blown. Okay. So let me be clear with this. If that's the tempo and you're doing it to manage anxiety, it yes. never works out favorably. At some point in that process, you're going to snap back. So in order to not have that snap back reality, these are why these steps are so important. I remember I had a client, it was like my first year running the Passion Center, and he was already a very successful entrepreneur. He was in his own business for about two years. And this guy, I mean, I have never seen someone start a business in two years and got the amount of success that he had in that short period of time. It was incredible. But he came to me and he's like, here, my life sucks. Here's why. I left corporate so that I can have more freedom, spend time with my family, more autonomy and all these things. Now I own something I absolutely hate and it's successful. <laughs> Talk about a bad situation to be in. You yeah. own the thing you actually now have turned to hate and it's successful. Yeah. And so what we learned on that journey of going through it was that there were fundamental things, gaps that he was experiencing. And he thought that because they're conscious, he thought that by closing those gaps, he would be in a better situation. What he wasn't looking at, if you go back to the discovery, what he wasn't looking at were the things that he didn't know to see and he didn't know was there. Those are the unconscious things we're talking about. So we had to go through this whole process. Now, because he's a badass, he was able to like do both, come up with a new business. That business was successful too, enough for him to exit his first one. So things turned around, but it was a slow build, mm -hmm. right? And mm -hmm. so understanding this next piece is, to understand that there are steps you have to do before. So the next piece is design So at, or develop rather. Develop, so, yep. so develop, sneak peek. So develop <clears throat> is more about this principle. You cannot develop what you don't first discover. And yet a lot of society is about, you know, personal development, professional development, and there's zero emphasis on personal discovery or professional discovery. That is like the most ass backwards thing I have ever seen in my life. You yeah. cannot you cannot develop if you don't first discover. But once you've done all of that, you've hit your detach and you do it all, then we can get into developing. And yeah. developing is exactly that. Yeah, and let me give you a perspective from a health and fitness perspective, right? So this looks like, kind of like your business guy, someone who goes in and says, I'm getting married or I'm, you know, going on a beach vacation with my new lover and mm -hmm. I need a hot bod. Right. 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 And 
It's just the external pull of like the success, the drive. And you can, we all know you can go on a crazy fat diet, drop 20 pounds and whatever, a short period of time. And then you're like, okay, I got the thing, but you don't <laughs> have it right. But you haven't developed the right. habits, the systems, the foundations, the fundamentals to maintain that. Right. You haven't yes, you haven't discovered the anchoring of how to create sustainability from that. You know what? It's just like people who win the lottery or get rich real quick. Yes. If you don't, this is why getting rich should be a slow move, right? Mm -hmm. Like businesses for me, I'm not about quick scale businesses at all. There are fundamental things you miss when you scale up quick, even though I, I know that that's pretty not in popularity, but it is my view. Because slow build or lean builds supports your ability to take a look and really understand all of the aspects of your business so that when you grow, you're building something that will last time. You know, yeah. I see a lot of entrepreneurs that will get funding really quickly in their business and crash later on. And like, and Matthew, you probably have a ton of stories in here. Matthew is a is is also a a, a a business strategies for startups, and so yeah, like there are stories beyond days of this. So again, it is crucial to discover first, then develop. Once yeah. you have all of the pieces, then you know where the pieces go. If you don't have all of the pieces, you're only developing what you know. That's dangerous. Yeah, yeah, dangerous. It's very dangerous. Okay, let's move on. All right. So, so after you have developed kind of your structural understanding of the operating systems that are involved in what you're doing next. So as in Catherine's example, your regimen, your routine, your habits, your practices that are going to be in that forward alignment or whether you're building a business or starting the next vision for what you want to do next based on something you're passionate about, then it's about design. And this one's fun, but why don't we, why, why don't you head this one off, Catherine? I feel like I'm talking a lot. Yeah. So this is, this <laughs> is, this is the entire, like the roadmap to get you to where you want to go, right? This is the structured habits. These are the principles. This is the new narration that you are living into those daily practices in your business, in your passion, in your health that get you the results, those every single action step that is in alignment, right? In alignment with that goal, right? And kind of what you were saying with the, the CEO that did really, really well, when it's out of alignment, right? When you don't discover, when you don't really understand and develop, then it's out of alignment. So design is really about looking at how is this in alignment with this new identity, identity that I've created, this new narrative that I'm living into so that we can really hone in to who we are becoming. Mm. Right. I could have said that any better. That's exactly it. And then once you design all of that, then you start to define. Then yes. you start to put language to things. Because language, by the way, it's always like the last. <laughs> people, people are so comical. I mean, I'm the same way because I'm a person too. I'm not sure if you guys know that. But <laughs> But we always we always want to play and flirt with the language because we think that that's so important. Like when you're building a business, what's my business name going to be? Yeah. Or, you know, or we want to have the label or the title or whatever. We think that that's important. Mm -hmm. Guys, this is like down below on the steps. Um, and when you start to really define defining, you're also defining not only the language, but the measurements. Yeah. So, so, you know, James Clear, something that uh, a book, Atomic Habits that Catherine and I both adore. Yes. It's all about making those 1% incremental changes so that you can adopt the habits and the practices that are going to get you to constant improvement, which then impacts your impact the most. But you're not going to know any of that without this step. Yeah. Well, these are like the metrics that we look at in our business, in our fitness, in our health, right? Whether it's blood labs to look at, you know, where is your fasting glucose, for example? Where is your hemoglobin? Where is your triglycerides, your cholesterol, right? And in the business, like what what is the ROI in the business? Looking at the metrics, the yes. measurement is so yeah. important, right? What are we tracking here? What yeah. are we tracking? What is the success measurement to go through the challenges and into the strengths of where we're going. 
So if you notice, guys, the first 20% of what this entire process is has a lot to do with the intrinsic fields of things. Then we get in the latter part to the extrinsic tactical actions of how to put things together. We, I'm, I'm beaten up on society today and I'm sorry about that. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I do find that culturally it's either we do one thing really good or another thing really good. We, we don't typically blend these things very well. So for example, when you're starting up a business, it's, and, and you want to kind of go into an incubator or get support on that, it's strictly your marketing plans, your brand, your audience profiling, like what are you doing with all of your legals and your operations? Nobody's talking to the founder about, hey, how are you? <laughs> are you going to really be passionate about this in five years? Or is this just like this really bright idea that, you know, you'll get pumped about and it'll be really great for the first year, but then you'll you'll KO by the 16th month because you don't have the energy to really pursue this really long thing that in your mind you thought was going to take six months to succeed at. Right. right. right? But I think, I think that life has a really imperfectly perfect way of doing things because we've really highlighted some beautiful examples where if you do the way you do one thing is how you do any everything, right? So if there's a gap somewhere and you've skipped over the intrinsic part, life has a funny way to bring that intrinsic part back in. Yes. Right? It's called a sling back. Like yes. there's always a sling back. <laughs> yeah. It's it's also like um when you go too far out of path and you yes. reach the boundaries or the borders or the fringes mm -hmm. of where you're supposed to go it goes back to the first one discomfort happens so discomfort is your sling, sling back and you're absolutely right we are linear linear linearizing linear linearizing that's not even a word we're no. creating a very linear process to something that if you were to do it naturally is like this yeah. And it's right. cyclical, it's all over the place, you know. Yeah. And, you know, I feel like Carol Moxham can really speak to this being a coach also, really yeah. understanding that there are so many pieces to the flow of business and life. And this is where coaches like us come in. This is where you mentoring your clients in passion and being able to look at where is the passion gap and where are they missing maybe the intrinsic actions and maybe the defining actions to really know how to get to where they want to go is so yeah. important, right? Even in the realm of health and fitness, right? Yes, we know we want to nourish our bodies better and move more, but what are the factors that constantly keep you stuck, that constantly you're self-sabotaging your process or in using food as, you know, comfort as opposed to fuel, right? Yeah. I think that life has a really interesting way of bringing it around and allowing us to see that, these are the principles that allow us to move through transformation in a sustainable, continuous way. Yeah. And I think that's also a really important point to note. Mm -hmm. These seven principles isn't just something that Catherine and I sat down and was like, let's just think up of a logical way of doing this. These are things that life produced. These are universal wisdom that we all will tap into eventually. It's just we've taken the time to study them, right? So if you want that quick one to two without the scenic, then that's what people pay for, right? People pay for that quicker, more, more access pass, let's call it, to that information, to making sure that it's like having a Sherpa. <laughs> if you go in on a trail and you don't know the trail and you don't know any of the landmarks or how to read the maps or anything like that, you're going to obviously something it's going to take you some time <laughs> versus being able to have somebody that can walk in front of you or show you all of the ropes and how to do it the right way so that you get to where you're you intend to get to safely yeah all of them all of them the same same principles um last one yeah i just want to comment on this so someone shared when we look at a very hustle culture phrase like don't wait for the feeling to change the action, take the action and your feelings will change. So if we were to give a name to this counterculture to that, what would we be calling it? Hustle culture? Versus, I would say, I would say it's alignment culture. Mm -hmm. I would say it's 
Okay, so right now you're talking about don't wait for the feeling to change to take the action, take the action and your feelings will change. Yeah, that's one way. It's called pushing. Oh, so yeah, it's, I think it's a symbiotic relationship, right? That sometimes you do right. have to change your state. Right. Right. In order to momentum get momentum out so of here's, darkness. Here's what I would say to that though, right? So people who are working from freeze won't be able to do this very well. Yes. Or people who are at capacity because they're in survival states, mm-hmm. um, they won't be in a space where changing states is is functional. Um, the body goes through states of paralysis when mm-hmm. it just cannot calculate safety in its environment or movement. So actually, I think you're right. I think that there is this balance. It's not just one way or another way. It's about finding where's that middle path. Sometimes you're going to need hustle. Sometimes you're going to need action. But Mm -hmm. if you are in these nuanced situations, there is benefit to really going through that, again, that discovery of what needs to be cleaned. How do we clear that so that your body can feel safe enough to go into action? Because this is what we miss. When we don't feel safe, we will not act. Yeah. I think, from, sorry. From fitness, this might be, yeah. Yeah, from a health perspective, we have to remember that our nervous system governs our body, right? And, and, yet, and our behavior, right? And when we are in a stress mode, fight, flight, or freeze, right? Like you were just speaking about, there are actual ways to ground your body to tap into your parasympathetic nervous system. So that you can be in more of a flow state, or at least in a grounding way that you can move yourself out of the paradigm of being stuck, right? Mm -hmm. And it's kind of like when you tell a child, I have two children, that oftentimes they'll be like, oh, it's such a bad day. I was like, why was your day so bad? Well, so-and-so looked at me funny, right? Because they get stuck on the one thing. There was a million beautiful- I still got stuck on that. Just kidding. Right? But- but (laughs) You know what I mean? Because we do. That person that pulled us over, pulled in front of us, cut us off in the morning, who maybe didn't even do it intentionally, throws off your entire day and pisses you off. And now you've had a bad day, right? Right, right. So these narratives that actually jack our nervous system, throw off, deploy like all these stress chemicals in our system, right? Right. It's such an interesting comment. That's why I wanted to pause on it. Because there is this symbiotic relationship that happens that you can get yourself out of that fight, flight, or freeze to say, yeah. how can I find alignment, find yeah. space to breathe, to recalibrate, right? Because we are like these amazing machines. It's really about recalibrating our systems often. Yes. And I also want to make a note on this as well. This mm-hmm. is for a nervous system that hasn't been hijacked over a long period of time. So Mm -hmm. when we go into acute, let's call it small T traumas, or if we have certain types of complex traumas inside of our body, and I'm not a trauma-informed specialist, I just, I've studied it for my own personal reasons, right? We do, it is a balancing act. And there is There is support and actual uh, functional tools that you will need in your toolkit to know how to work with a system like that, because we we can't. It's not obvious to us all. I wouldn't know if Catherine's carrying that bag or if Mary is carrying that bag or Robert is carrying that bag. So from your perspective, it's super, super important to understand like your trauma profile to see how your neurology is going to react. And then let's not even like it it gets anyways, there, there is diversity in the way that people overcome these, um, their, their hustle and getting into pure busy, pure action and so forth. And this entire narrative that that's the way to success I think we can all agree that there are some flaws there. Uh, So I don't know that you want a counter to that because Mm -hmm. anytime you go from one extreme to another extreme, that extreme will cause problems. What we want to have is a balance to that. So understanding what are the, um, so if one is hustle and the other is stillness, then where can we get that sweet spot, that Goldilocks charm to really support us in our abilities to get the things that we want in life and create sustainable impact in the things that we want to do, no matter what our goals are. 
Yeah. Right. And it is, you know, about the self mastery aspect also. Right. right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I saw, I saw some comments on that right now, like down here, higher level of understanding, ownership, commitment, I believe being realistic, patience, and consistent, what is this? Consistent yeah. to avoid disappointment and power. Yeah, this is, this is something else that's really super important to remember too. Um, many of us can walk around with learned self-helplessness yes. uh, and be in states of disempowerment for a long time. And so the empowerment of radical ownership is yeah that's the place that's the place we want to get to huge, huge. Yeah. all right so the last one so we covered design we covered define define was all about the measurements the parameters really understanding what are the kpis of our experience so that we can track it and we know that we're going in the right direction the last one is deployment and deployment is, is a continuous process. It doesn't stop there. It's almost like it's a spiral. <laughs> so really, Catherine, what are your thoughts when we're talking about like wrapping this up and moving us into this next stage of our transformation? Well, it's kind of like that old adage when people say like you climb the mountain to the summit and all of a sudden you look up and there's more of the mountain. Right? Yeah. Or another mountain. Yes. Or another mountain, right? Yeah, like yeah. a mountain yeah. too that keeps just growing and growing. Yeah. Um, but it really is this idea that it is this continuous improvement, right? Of like, how do we be in that state of optimizing and not from a place of, I think I mentioned this last time, not from a place of scarcity and not good enough, but right. this method of success and this continuous progress of saying, okay, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling in flow getting in the Goldilocks charm, right? Finding that sweet spot because that that is the balance, whether it is in your health and fitness or your passion, feeling like all things are in this beautiful juggling act, right? Yes. Having our priorities in order that we're feeling in flow and in alignment with what we are doing in our lives, right? So this is the deployment of and the support of which the design and the define really allows for the deployment to happen. And it is this kind of beautiful flow state of where things are happening. Transformation is realized and it just keeps going and going. Does that make sense? A hundred percent. And mm -hmm. I think too, like there's two things to know in this state because we do all of this work. And I think sometimes we have this misconception about what this state means because we want it so bad and we've, we're experiencing the gap. So we think, oh, when I get there, <laughs> it's going to be this like nice island and my life's going to be great and all of the things. Guys, I got to be honest, if you're not training for your life to be great, it's not going to be. No matter how many different conditions that you put in place or how many things you get um, from this journey. Yep. It is a process and it is continuous and it doesn't end until we die. Yep. And I think that um, I think a lot of people feel or at least have the impression that, you know, there's again, it's like a vacation. You, you get on this island and everything works out. Life's life and it will find all the ways to keep you growing and keep you learning. And I ultimately believe that growth is universal love. Yes. That's what I believe. And oh. that's what all of this is for. The universe is saying, you know what? I love you so much that you, while you're here, is going to have all of the opportunities to improve so that you can be your greatest. And I'm going to, I'm not going to let you down. I'm going to give you all the hardships in the world for you to shave up. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. You know, and we can start embracing that, right? Embracing the journey and you know, I know love is a big word, but really acknowledging that all these pieces are so fundamental to who we are. And if we can really start seeing the silver lining in the challenges sometimes, like the challenges that you're speaking to, then I think it's a beautiful life, right? I, I just, it's all about those pieces, right? A thousand percent. It is all about those, those pieces, the good, the bad, the truth, the ugly, right? it. Yeah. And I feel too that like, I haven't learned um, the most, in my view, in my experience, in my life experience, I haven't learned those profound truths, mm. through the joys of my life. I've learned them through the pain. And so I say all the time, 
when you look at the big balance of how you identify meaning in your life, we all need those joyous, fluffy moments because that's the buoyancy of our experience. But we also need the pain of our experience for the gravity. And together, they form unity that helps supreme balance and mm. helps your life come to life, yeah. mean something deeper. So guys, first of all, I just want to thank you all so much for being with us for 54 minutes and 44 seconds. <laughs> This has been such a delightful conversation with you, Catherine. The energy that you bring into any space is just such a beautiful blend of mastery and compassion. So to be journeying this with you is my absolute honor and privilege. And I'm so glad that we get to continue this conversation together. And for those of you that have joined us, I need to go back and read every single one of your comments because every single time I'm glancing, you guys are saying something really super profound and really super just amazing. So thank you for your engagement tonight. It made my experience so much better. Yeah, I'm excited for what's to come. So make sure you join us in two weeks, Thursday, same time, same back channel. We're going yeah. to go into the conversation of each of these principles yeah. and we would love for you to continue engaging with us and those of you catching this on the replay we want to hear from you too right we're going to be looking at all these comments because this conversation matters mastering yourself and mastering your impact of how you're doing it in your health your business your life your passion matters right mm -hmm. and that's why this conversation matters so i'm so i'm so honored to be able to do this with you the way that you you guys know Kira wraps things up with like a beautiful sparkly <laughs> bow, right? You say things so beautifully and eloquently. So I'm excited to be here with you, shake things up a little bit too. So thank you guys for this conversation. We are honored that you sat, sat with us for almost an hour. Thank you. So the next time we'll be popping on, we're doing this every other week. So yeah. next week we'll break, but the week after we'll be back with another really deep convo on mastering your impact. We'll see you then, guys. Bye. Bye. <laughs>